Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see analysis of GS paper 4. So this GS paper 4 in our UPSC mains includes ethics, integrity and aptitude. So this paper, it is for 250 marks. So this paper is, I can say, it is one of the deciding factor. And this paper will decide whether your name will be there in the final list or not. So four papers that you have to prepare well to see your name in the in this clearing of this mains is the first one it is your optional paper. So optional will be like 500 marks and you'll be having two papers. You have to focus on these two papers, paper one and paper two of your optional. And the second one is your essay and next one is your ethics. So these three are very important to clear your UPSC means. And this ethics, it is a single subject and you can follow the book uh, like for example G. Subarao is there and you can follow Balaji book or even lexicon. So it is your wish. And actually I want to say one thing here is, so in this ethics you will be having two sections. So section A will be there and section B will be there. And this section A which includes mainly your theory part. And this section B you will be having case studies. So you will be getting theory of around 120 to 130 marks. And this section B of case study that is about 120 to 130 marks. So in this year 2022 UPSC means in this section A that is from theory you got 130 marks. And from case studies, you got 120 marks. So total, if you add this theory and case studies, it will be like your 250 marks. So if you prepare theory well, and if you're implying or if you are applying those theory concepts in your case studies, yes, you can get a good marks. So please believe me. So in this year 2022 ethics paper, it is very easy than compared to that of this previous year's papers, but it is very lengthy to read and also to write. So the drawback here is, yes, this is very, very easy because questions are directly asked from our syllabus. And even what are the thing that we studied in our ethics uh, course that are directly given in this year paper. And also I want to say this year paper is a well structured paper. And you can stick to the word limit to complete your paper within the time of three hours and the questions are divided properly and examiner communicated properly like so what they were expecting from the student okay so your drawback is it is lengthy to read and also lengthy to write so now if you see the analysis of this uh, paper especially if you're talking about either essay or this case uh, studies or this theory of ethics so what we write which depends upon the way you approach that so and so topic so I can see some examples. I think you might wrote some other examples. So there is no particular correct answer. So whatever you write, so try to give the examples such that examiner will understand your way of approach. So now let us try to see just analysis of this GS paper 4 here. And in the future lectures, we are going to see each and every question, question by question. And we are going to see what to be the introduction what to be the body and how you can conclude your answer and even we are going to talk about some other diagrams or any flow charts diagrams and also some charts that we can include here so we are going to see in our future series don't worry about that the first question is wisdom lies in knowing what to reckon with and what to overlook so this question is about wisdom an officer being engrossed with the periphery, ignoring the core issues before him, is no rare in the bureaucracy. Do you agree that such preoccupation of an administrator leads to travesty of the justice and to the cause of effective service delivery and good governance critically evaluate? So if you are talking about this question, so here you have to identify the keywords. So the keywords here is here bureaucrats, they are looking just periphery but not the core issues. So this is the first thing. So whenever, whenever bureaucrats 
who tries to address any scenario or for example any rape issue or any untoward incident so they are focusing on just periphery rather than the core core issues so this is the demand of the question and you have to give the examples like what happens if a bureaucrat who looks into the periphery of the issue but not going into the core of the issue okay so you can write about the way how these bureaucrats they are, they are seeing any issue or any untoward incident on the periphery why they are not going into the core issues so here you have to focus on how the justice delivery system is affected and you can talk about how effective delivery of justice can be ensured and you can talk about even good governance okay so this question is from the topic of good governance so in this way you can give some examples and try to explain the explain the concept of how can we ensure effective service delivery system how it is affecting this travesty of justice okay so this is the first question and the second one is 1b so apart from intellectual competency and moral qualities empathy and compassion they are some of the other vital attributes that facilitate the civil servants to be more competent in tackling the crucial issues or taking critical decisions explain with suitable illustrations so this question it is directly from your public service values so there in our codes we discussed about impartiality honesty neutrality dedication to work etc correct so here if you are talking about especially ideology of gandhi he says honesty integrity which is required for everyone but especially for this public services or this civil servant compassion empathy they are very much important so we need to show that is especially you are the future bureaucrats and you are going to be the future civil servant so a civil servants they need to have this empathy and they need to have this compassion and they need to show this empathy and compassion towards the weaker sections of society so why we need this empathy and compassion because in india saying all the people is impossible because we have poor people we have rich people we have uneducated people and even there is no proper literacy in some areas so because of this they don't know about their rights about the laws etc so this question is about legal versus ethical okay so in our course we discussed about this legal versus ethical and we discussed number of examples so those examples you can directly write here so most of the people they think that if they are following this law or legally whenever they are legally correct so then it is enough so they that action will be ethically also right but it is not the same case here so even though whatever the things if i am a civil servant if i am following the laws so if i am following the laws or if i am taking any action which is legally correct it might not be ethically or morally correct for example let me take a scenario if there is a old woman for example government came up with a social security scheme for old women but this old woman actually she didn't have the enough documents to avail this benefits under this scheme so as a civil servant as a public servant i have to make this so and so scheme which which should be needed for those people right for those old women but because of lack of documents i can't give that facility for that so and so woman so as a civil servant if i am not providing that service for that so and so woman she is in need of that scheme means so the entire theme of this uh, scheme of social security will be going to vain so as a civil servant if i follow the rules like if she has only document then she will be getting this scheme so it is legally correct but ethically and morally wrong so in this way you can add some examples here so this is about this question so this is about the first question and next to see the second question in second question also we have part a and part b so second question here is the rules and regulations provided to all civil servants are same yet there is difference in the performance what are the rules and regulations provided for the civil servants are same yet there is difference in the performance so positive minded officers are able to interpret the rules and regulations in the favor of the case and they will achieve success but negative minded officers are unable to achieve goals by interpreting the same rules and regulations against the case discuss 
with illustrations. So here this question which is talking about positive minded people and negative minded people. It is talking about rules and regulations. So here this positive minded and negative minded which is related to our chapter called as attitude. It is talking about the mindset of officers. So if you are taking any problem, for example, there is one problem. So if you are taking, there are two persons out there. So one person who is seeing the same problem in one dimension and he is getting the perspectives and the second person, he will be looking at the same problem in the other dimensions. So what happened? Same person cannot see the same problem in the same dimensions and they are not going to get the same perceptions. Correct. So because of this, based on this attitude of people, either it may be like a positive attitude or negative attitude. So based on that attitude, so the perceptions will be come into picture. Okay. So here if you're talking about some problems like population, some problem like implementation of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, feminism, removal of patriarchy. Okay. So recently there was one article in Hindu which talks about this patriarchy. So here some people say that Yes, we need to bring down this patriarchy in the society. So if at all, this patriarchy it is not come into end, that will not lead to progress in society. That will not lead to women empowerment or women, they will be not having the equal chances, okay, equal share in the economy. So here because of this, yes, if you see other people, they say that, yes, we did a long uh, enormous progress in this removing of patriarchy in the society and we need to go more and we need to speed up this process but what are the direction we are following we should not change that direction so regarding this patriarchy itself there are a number of perception that we can see in our society right so if you're taking any issue we can see it in the different dimensions or many dimensions so here this question is asking about civil services attitude civil servants attitude so if you're taking any issue, for example, you can take population issue or you can take groundwater issue or pollution issue and you can talk about what are the rules and regulations talks about that and you can talk about the same positives and the negatives of that rules and regulations. Okay, so this question is about exactly bureaucratic attitude. So I hope you understand this. And this one is second B. So now let us try to see this question that is second B. It is believed that adherence to ethics in human actions would ensure in smooth functioning of an organization or a system. So yes, this question is directly from your chapter 1 that is ethics in human interface. If so, what does ethics seeks to promote in human life? How do ethical values assist in the resolution of conflicts faced by him in his day to day functioning? So it is a very direct question from your chapter 1 and in our course we discuss this topic in a very great detail and there we discussed about what is the importance of this ethics. So here yeah, this question is directly from your chapter 1 that is ethics in human interface. So here you have to write about what does ethics tries to promote in the human life. So why we need this ethics? So even there are number of articles which says that we have to come up with this chapter of ethics in the school days or this for the in the schoolings itself. So why? Why we need to promote ethics in the children? We have to talk about that and even we have to see that how ethics will ensure the human actions are always right. Not only according to themselves but also according to society. So if I'm doing any action, I think that this action is correct to me. So we have to also think that it should not be only correct from our side, but even from the society perspective. So ethical life normally makes a person to lead a very happy life because he will not be guilt within, nor he will not be guilt of doing wrong from the outside as well. Okay, so if there is any conflict of interest which is seen, so there, if you're applying that, so we can come out of that conflict also. Okay, so how do these ethical values which assist in resolving the conflict of interest? For example, as an individual, if you're doing any action, so if there are any conflict, for example, personal life versus professional life or at the value system level, so we can see some conflicts. So in this way, ethics will help them to resolve this conflict and ethics will help them to lead a smoother and happier life so in this way you can give your answer for this sub question 2b 
and now let us see the next question that is third question so in this third question we have three sub questions a b c so this question is for 30 marks so now let us try to see the first one that is ethics is knowing the difference between what you have the right to do and what is the right to do porter stewart so every year in this theory part you can expect one question from the court so actually they will be giving the court and they ask that what do you understand from that court and what is the relevance but this time they asked about what it means okay what it means and also they asked to give you the examples it might be the historical examples it might be the recent examples they didn't give any clarification regarding so which example you have to write but you have to write the example so this first quote which is given by this Potter Stewart so this is a very very important and also interesting quote okay so here in this quote here what can you write so you can write about fundamental rights so in our part 3 of Indian Constitution we have this fundamental rights for example right to religion okay that is a freedom of religion yes we are uh, our constitution of india which is giving this fundamental rights and it is giving some uh, rights to do certain things right but here the one question which comes into picture is should i do it or not yes i have this right but should i do this right or not so this is the second question which appears for example if you are talking about this code of conduct as an individual or as a person in the society yes you can follow your own religion because constitution itself it is giving its right that is a freedom of religion but as a civil servant when you follow such things like propagation of religion publicly then what happened in the society that will create some anxiety okay that will create some fear in the society that this so and so guy he is biased towards so and so religion so I have a right to follow this religion because we have fundamental rights and fundamental rights guaranteed every citizen of India. It is a freedom of religion for example, correct? But is it right to do so as a civil servant? So you can take this type of examples and you can write this answer for this 3A. And next one is 3B. If a country is to be corruption free, and become a nation of beautiful minds i strongly feel there are three key societal members who can make a difference they are father mother and teacher so this quote is by abdul kalam so this quote which is related to our subject it is talking about role of family and role of teachers or education institutions in developing attitudes okay so this is also a very direct question and this quote is very much relevant from our ethics point of view so if you're talking about the role of education institutions role of family they plays an important role in the developing of attitudes especially to ensure the country should be a corruption free so in this context here the role of teacher is very important and even role of family that is mother and father is also very crucial so you have to know about impact of education and as well as family on the developing of attitudes. So society which begins with the family, right? So the first institution that we come across here is family. So here in the family, we can understand how father deals with the problems, how father deals with the financial stress and how uh, mother teaches the things. So mother will be the first teacher. So how this mother teaches the ethics to the children and how teacher taught. So teacher plays an important role because even though if mother and uh, father they are teaching in the house but whenever they are going to school here they will be having a great impact on the developing of mindset because teacher they will be explaining the things logically. So whenever teacher explains the things logically that will fix in your mind. So because of this yes mother, father and teacher will have an important role. Okay you can write some examples. And next one is 3C. So here 3C, it is a quote given by Dalai Lama. So the judge your success by what you had give up in order to get it. So this quote it is talking about success. So how can we measure success? So here Dalai Lama says that 
सो यर सक्सेस इज नथिंग बट यर सक्सेस इज नथिंग बट और हु इज सक्सेस और हु इज फेल्यूर नॉर्मली डिपेंड्स अपॉन वॉट ही अचीव्ड एंड वॉट ही लॉस्ट इन द प्रोसेस वॉट ही अचीव्ड एंड वॉट ही लॉस्ट इन द प्रोसेस सो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अवर जी डी पी दैट इज ग्रॉस डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्ट येस वी आर सेंग दैट रिसेंटली वन आर्टिकल दैट केव इंडिया इज द फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी नाव इंडिया बीट एड यू के एंड यू के नाव इट इज सिक्स पोजिशन एंड इंडिया इज फिफ्थ पोजिशन करेक्ट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर डेवलपिंग ऑफ जी डी पी वीन टू फोकस ऑन मैनुफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर और वीन टू गो फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट और इन दिस प्रोग्रेस ऑफ दिस इकोनॉमी what happened we also released lot of carbon emissions so we are compromising on environment and not only that in achieving of literacy so what are the achievements that we got and what we lost for example to become as an world power so what are the achievements we got and what are the losses we did and majoritarian rule so you can take this type of examples and you can explain this quote so this is a very very easy and now let us see the next question that is the fourth question so in the fourth question again we have two parts that is 10 marker questions each so in the first one that is a fourth a it is about what do you understand by the term good governance you can easily write about this good governance in the introduction and how for recent initiatives in term of e governance steps taken by state have helped the beneficiaries so i think you might have gone through this arc report in the second arc report there is one chapter exclusively dealing with this e governance and here you have to write about this suitable examples so actually this question is directly from your arc report and if you have gone through that arc report i can say that i can give you assurance that you will be writing this answer and you will be getting more than 5 marks if you are giving good examples here so here introduction you can write about good governance you can you can also write about the principles of this good governance there are eight principles of good governance you can draw that image and here you have to give some initiatives to taken by the states so there are number of states they came up with the, this e governance model for example because of this e governance model in karnataka that led to pd transfers and teacher transfers and if you see in andhra pradesh so there were number of for uh, for uh, farmers associations they come into picture okay so in this way you can write the suitable example it is a very direct question and next one is 4b so question here is online methodology online methodology is being used for day to day meetings institutional approvals in the administration and for teaching and learning in education sector to the extent telemedicine in the health sector is getting popular with the approvals of competent authority no doubt it has advantages and disadvantages for both beneficiaries and the system at the large so describe and discuss ethical issues involved in the use of online method particularly to the vulnerable sections of society so even in today's hindu editorial so there is an editorial regarding fraternity which uh, is written by our ex vice president so in that article and that editorial i found that according to sociologists there were nine sections of society they were what very much vulnerable some of them includes women adivasis dalits and religious minorities so this is the data from today's newspaper itself you can read that article in your editorial session from today's hindu which who which is written by our ex vice president ansari sir so this is a very very such a nice article he talked about the important values of values that we can get from preamble like equality liberty and fraternity he talked about those three things so if you are talking about this uh, vulnerable sections of society we have to identify them who are they for example women for example religious minorities and people who are from the rural areas and we have to talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of this online methodology for example if you are taking about education itself so in hindu there were number of articles regarding this online education what are the advantages what are the disadvantages you can write them okay so this is a very simple answer and now let us see the next question that is a fifth question so in this fifth question also we have two parts that is part a part b and two questions are for 10 marker question so first question here is russian ukraine war has been going 
on for last seven months. So from February twenty fourth, twenty twenty two onwards. So we see this Russia Ukraine conflict. Russia started attack on this Ukraine on this February twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. So it has been more than seven months. So different countries have taken independent stance and actions, keeping in the view their own national interest. So if you see here, Ukraine, which is supported by Western countries, for example, U.S., for example, France, Germany, and if you see here, Russia recently gave a statement that we are not fighting against Ukraine; we are fighting against West. So here, yes, there are number of countries involved. and these countries they have taken their own independence their own independent stance and actions keeping in their view their own national interest so we all aware that war has its own impact on the different aspects of society including human tragedy so whenever there is a war means it will be leading to the loss of uh, property loss of life so we can see human tragedy so what are those ethical issues that are crucial to be considered while launching a war and its continuation so far illustrate with justification the ethical issues involved in the given state of affair so yes i expected that there will be question regarding this regarding this russia ukraine war in this ethics yes the question appeared so this question you can relate to our international relations especially in ethics also we have one chapter or one topic called as ethics in ir ethics in international relations there you can talk about the war and what are the side effects of war here so this is a very simple and next one it is about they gave some words and they they asked to write uh, or give the explanation of that so and so key word within 30 words and we here we have five words and that means answer should be given in 150 words so it is a 10 marker question once again so first one is constitutional morality so constitutional morality is nothing but following the values which are present or given in our constitution it is called as constitutional morality and this one is conflict of interest so whenever the, there are two ideas they are having the conflict for example personal interest versus professional interest that is called as conflict of interest property in public life so there is a separate chapter that is a property so here you have to write just what is the meaning of property okay property in public life it is not only honesty but even we have to focus on integrity and this integrity and honesty they should go side by side and this one is challenges of digitalization you can write about what are the positives and what are the negatives of digitalization and this one is devotion to duty so rather than doing multiple things at one time so it is important to do specific activity properly so that is called as devotion to duty so this is about this fifth b and next one it is about our last question in our theory that is sixth question we are here we have two parts so first question is whistle blower who reports corruption and illegal activities wrong doing and misconduct to the concerned authorities runs the risk of being exposed to grave danger physical harm victimization by the vested interest accused persons in his team what policy measures you uh, would you suggest to strengthen protection mechanism to safeguard this whistle blowers so regarding this whistle blowers also we discussed in detail in our course and even in our second arc report there is one chapter which talks about this whistle blower okay so here this is a direct question and next one is sixth b in contemporary world corporate sector's contribution is generating wealth and employment is increasing in doing so they are bringing in unprecedented onslaught on climate environmental sustainability and living conditions of human beings in this background do you uh, responsibility csr is efficient and sufficient enough to fulfill the social roles and responsibilities needed in the corporate work mandated critical exam so this question is about csr that is about corporate sector for example so actually there is one topic in our ethics syllabus is ethics in corporate sector 
okay ethics in corporate governance so this question is directly from that topic and here regarding the csr also you have to think it about this ones and this csr it is also seen in use and try to write answer for this question and next it is about section b section b we will be having case studies and there are six case studies in this year paper and each case study it is 20 marker so 16 to 20 we have 120 marks from this case studies so the first case study is about this Prabhat. So Prabhat was working as a vice president at Sterling Electric Limited. Actually it is a reputed multinational company but presently the company which is passing through difficult times. Because the sales are continuously showing downward trend in the last two quarters. So his division with Hitherto uh, had been a major revenue contributor to the company's financial health. So his, his role is very important, this Prabhat role is very important for this company's financial health. And trying to procure some big government order for them. But their best efforts did not yield any positive success or any breakthrough. So he is a professional, his, he was a professional company and his local bosses they were under pressure from their London based HO to show some positive results. So in the last performance review meeting taken by this executive director, he was re reprimanded for his poor performance and he assured them that his division is working on a special contract from Ministry of Defense for a secret installation near Gwalior and tender is being submitted shortly. He was under extreme pressure and he was deeply perturbed with what aggravated the situation. Further was a warning from the top that if the deal is not clinched in the favor of company, his division might have to be closed and he may have to quit this job. Okay, so this is about one side. So he will be losing the job if he is not going to get the deal. And on the second dimension, so he is also facing deep mental torture and agony. He is pertained to his personal precarious financial health. He was a single earner in the family. So here, this uh, case study is also linked to the family with two school college going children and his old ailing mother. The heavy expenses on the education medical was causing a big strain to his monthly pay pocket. Regular EMI for housing loan taken from the bank unavoidable and any default would render him liable for a severe legal action. So in the above backdrop, he was hoping for some miracle to happen. There was sudden turn of events. His secretary informed that a gentleman Shubhas Verma wanted to see him and he was interested in the position of a manager which was to be filled by him in the company. He further brought to his notice that his CV was, has been received through the office of Ministry of Defense. So during the interview of the candidates, Shubhash Verma, he found him technically sound, resourceful and experienced marketer. He seemed to be well conversant with uh, tendering procedures and having knack to follow up and liaising in this regard, Prabhat felt that he was better choice than the rest of candidates who were recently interviewed by him in the last few days. Subhash Verma also indicated that he was in the position of the copies of the bid documents that Unique Electronics Limited would be submitting the next day to the Defense Ministry. So here this is a one of the rivalry company for this company, Sterling Company. So he offered to hand over those documents subject to his employment in the company on the suitable terms and conditions. So finally, so this uh, case study I will be giving you the gist. The gist here is, so here this Prabhat, he is the vice president and he plays important role in the company. Okay, so but what happened, there is a financial crisis which is faced by the company and they want to get this tender from this Ministry of Defense. On another side, one person is there, he gave some crucial information of that opposition company. So, which is going to give the tender for that so and so deal. Right, so this is the 
some important thing and here you have to discuss what are the ethical issues involved and you have to examine the options available and you have to say which option you are going to select so ethical issues here the first one is company's financial status and if this deal they are going they are not going to get means that will lead to loss of job of that so and so board and this one is conflict of interest that is a personal interest versus professional values and institutional corruption that we can see because so and so person who is giving information he is doing some cheat okay that is uh, mainly leads to this institutional corruption and promoting of uh, culture okay promoting of culture in the future and this one here is what is the guarantee that whatever the information that is provided by him is true so here there is also a lack of integrity of the person who is working in the another company right so these are some ethical issues and you can see the options option here is especially of the financial status of the company and financial status of uh, prabhat family yes he can accept that information and he can move forward and this one here is he can reject it completely and he can take just relevant information and should not bring that person onto the board because so what is the guarantee that the same thing that will be not happen with this company in the future okay so here i can go with the option 2 so in this way you can give your case study and the second case study it is about ramesh e state civil service officer who got the opportunity of getting posted getting posted to the capital of a border state after rendering 20 years of service ramesh mother has recently been detected cancer and has admitted in the leading cancer hospital of the city he his two adolescent children have also got admission in the one of the best public schools of the town after settling down in his appointment as director in the home department of the state ramesh got confidential support through intelligence sources that illegal migrants they are infiltrating in the state from the neighboring country so he decided to personally carry out the surprise check at the border post along with his home department team to his surprise he caught red handed two families of 12 members infiltrate infiltrated with the connivans of the security personnel at the border post on further inquiry and investigation it was found that after the migrants from the neighboring countries infiltrate their documentation like aadhar card ration card voter card also forged and they are made to settle down in the particular area of the state Ramesh prepared a detailed and comprehensive report and submitted to additional secretary of the state. However, he was summoned by the additional home secretary after a week and was interest um, and was instructed to withdraw the report. So the additional home secretary informed Ramesh that the report submitted by him has not been appreciated by higher authorities. He further cautioned him that if he fails to withdraw this confidential report he will not only be posted out of the prestigious appointment from the state capital but his further promotion which was due in the near future will also get in jeopardy so what are the options available so what option should he adopt critical evaluate each options what are the ethical dilemmas and what are the policy measures so actually there are five sub questions that means each question will have four marks So actually, these questions which are not given in order. So first of all, try to start with ethical dilemmas. So after writing ethical dilemmas, you have to write about what are the options which are present, and you have to evaluate them. That means you can write positives and negatives, and you have to write which option you are going to choose, and you have to at last you can suggest some way forward. So in this way, you can approach this case study. Okay. So here, this uh, case study which is talking about illegal. migration correct and here especially in this border areas so it is a issue of national security so here you have to focus on national security it is very much important than the personal option or the growth okay so in this way you can write and already i gave you the framework for the first case study and in the future case studies uh, future classes we are going to see each and every case study with the options okay don't worry about that and the next case study it is about illegal mining so here you are getting some critical information but media is not ready to accept that because of some nexus okay 
So here you can write about what are the options which are present like uh, and you can give the positives and negatives and you can give the ethical dimension dilemmas here for example I have to stand by values professional integrity etc so those will be the some ethical dilemmas so this is about this case study which asks about the same thing that is what are the options evaluate the options ethical dilemmas so which option you will be adopting and you can talk about the way forward and the tenth case study so it is about ethics especially it is talking about ethics in corporate governance it's talking about ethics in corporate governance so it is also simple so try to write answer and here also they will be asking about options and if you have to critically evaluate those options ethical dilemmas so what will be the consequences so in each, in each and every case study we will be having like four to five questions this year and this case study is about empathy and compassion okay so empathy and compassion so what is the importance of empathy okay so you can try read this case study and you can go through this and here also in this case study they asked about the options available examine the options ethical dilemmas and the course of action so this type of case studies we already gave in our mains answer writing course so it's ex uh, exactly so what is the demand of the question so we are giving that type of case studies in our mains answer writing program so if you want to improve this answer writing and if you want to get the good marks in the mains so try to join that mains answer writing course so the details are given in the description box and every month in every month in the first week on the first monday so this course will be going to be started so try to join and if you have any doubts please contact us on this number 8074765513 okay and the last case study and if you are talking about this last case study uh, which is talking about environment so actually you will be having one topic called as environmental ethics so here always there will be some dilemma which we can see ethics in this ethics that is environmental ethics that is environment versus development so in environment versus development we can see always one dilemma so if you are moving towards development we should compromise on the develop and this environment for example if you want to have the proper roadways proper railways yes we have to go for cutting down of trees or deforestation right but here on the other side that will leads to the loss of our so and so habitat loss of uh, habitat or degradation of forest etc so on one side if you want to go for development like providing the jobs providing the proper livelihoods for the people growth and improving the standard of people yes we have to focus on that but here in this context we need to go for median path we need to go for median path okay and give some time and warn them about what will be the consequences and we need to take some timely measures okay we need to we need to ensure that everyone they need to follow this uh, environment control measures etc so this uh, case study is in this paper because recently in our hindu analysis we discussed about this thermal power plants okay and recently our government which gave the deadlines okay and these deadlines regarding implementation of uh, measures by the thermal power plants they are mainly crossing these deadlines okay so this is about this topic and finally is yes, if you are talking about this type of dilemmas between environment and uh, development yes you can follow this median path already we discussed about this case study in detail in our ethics course so if you want to get the conceptual clarity so without getting conceptual clarity you can't write the answers for this ethics so it is evident here so in our ethics course we discussed each and every topic in our syllabus and i also discussed the main questions and even i discussed the case studies and how to approach them so try to join that course okay that course which dealt by me and it will be like more than 45 hours of course so if you want to join that course you can visit our website rathodsicacademy.com there you can click on the course list you can see this ethics and click there and purchase that course there itself so this is about this analysis of gs paper 4 i know that i already i am already late because of some issues i was already late so but this analysis will be helpful to the beginners especially who are reading this ethics and who are having dilemma like how to approach this ethics and how questions will be asked in this ethics so actually all the questions they are from our syllabus itself okay so here some tips i can say here is follow the syllabus 
and get as many examples as possible either from the historical perspective or from the recent current affairs and you have to also focus on the quotes so every year there will be one question regarding the quotes and you have to follow approach for solving of this case studies and answer writing practice is very important because completing of this lengthy paper within these three hours it is a very challenging so try to practice this ethics paper and before your ethics exam so you have to write at least two or three tests of three hours so that that will be helpful to understand so how can you manage the time in the exam because reading the question understand the demand of question writing the answer it is a very difficult task so try to practice 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 makes man perfect so by this i'm concluding thank you so much